The roots of black hair run so deep. Before slavery, I could learn everything about you just by looking at your hair. Braid patterns and hairstyles indicated age, gender, marital status, royal status, tribe, wealth, power, social status, and religion. Certain hairstyles were even done to express the mourning of a lost loved one. Our ancestors created the wide tooth comb because they believed that it would be less damaging to our fragile hair texture. Herbs and oils were used to maintenance our hair. Our ancestors believed that if you took care of your hair, you took care of your destiny. 1444 was the year of the first documented slave trade on the west of Africa. Westerners admired the creativity and versatility in our hairstyles. But of course, our hair was shaved to deprive us of our identity. In 1619, the first slaves arrived to Jamestown, Virginia. They had to get rid of their native language, culture, beliefs. They received more European names. And after a three month journey on the ship, a lot of slaves arrived to Virginia with matted hair. Without their rich herbs and shea oils from back home, it was hard for our ancestors to care for their hair. They began to use butter and bacon grease for hair maintenance. Blacks became forced to adjust to the European standard of beauty. Beauty. Whites described our hair as nappy, wooly, and unruly. Our hair was degraded in every way, shape, and form, and it was even cut off by slave masters as a form of punishment. They would use our hair to stuff furniture and make blankets. Slaves wore cornrows to pay homage to their heritage and to keep their hair protected during long hours of labor. Slaves with thinner, wavier hair would receive better treatment and would be sold at higher prices at slave auctions. Creole women that were free in New Orleans began to wear elaborate hairstyles that were deprived from us as slaves. These elaborate hairstyles included feathers, beads, and jewels, which attracted the attention of white men. White women became envious of our appearance. As a result, Tegon laws were passed in 1786. Tegon laws forced black women, slave or free, to wear a headdress to cover their hair. Creole women covered their hair but still found a way to glamorize their head wraps with creative accessories and wrapping techniques. This continued to attract the attention of white men. Though these laws ended in 1803, the head wrap is still worn today by black women to pay homage to their heritage. The hot comb was created by the French in the early 1800s. The hot comb was used to style white women's hair in the same hairstyle worn by ancient Egyptian women. When slavery was abolished in 1865, whites still praised black women who pressed their hair, labeling straight hair as good and tame. In 1906, the first perm was created for whites who wanted their hair to be patterned after our kinky, coily hair texture. In 1916, Annie Malone, a black woman, founded and opened Poro College in St. Louis. This was the first educational institution in the United States devoted to the study of black cosmetology. Annie Malone was also the first to patent the high comb. She later hired Sarah Breedlove as one of her employees, who the world will later know as Madam C.J. Walker. People say that Madam C.J. Walker invented the hot comb, but she didn't, nor was she a patent of the hot comb. Madam C.J. Walker, however, did invent hair care products for blacks to increase hair growth. After blacks started to use the hot comb, conditions such as dandruff and scope eczema became more common among black hair. Madam C.J. Walker created products to treat those conditions. Many often criticize Madam C.J. Walker for her participation in pushing the European standard of beauty amongst blacks by selling skin lightening products and encouraging blacks to wear straight hair. A black nationalist named Marcus Garvey encouraged blacks to reclaim their African roots and to wear their natural hair. Some of his famous quotes are, a people without knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. And do not remove the kinks from your hair, remove them from your brain. George E. Johnson created the permanent hair straightener for men in 1954. The chemical relaxer for women followed shortly after, allowing both men and women to have straight hair without constantly applying heat. In the early 1960s, Motown shed light on black music. Most artists began the trend of big exaggerative hairstyles and skyscraping wigs such as the beehive hairdo. In the late 1960s to early 70s, black men and women began to take back their black hair with the Afro movement. The Afro was a major political statement against oppression. It symbolized power and black pride. At a 1966 rally, a black activist named Stokely Carmichael told a crowd, we have to stop being ashamed of being black. A broad nose, a thick lip, and a nappy hair is us, and we are going to call that beautiful. 
whether they like it or not. We are not going to fry our hair anymore. This gave rise to the quote, black is beautiful. The Afro movement gave rise to the blowout comb. It also gave rise to Afro sheen. With the Afro's huge connection with the black political movement, the Afro began to be banned in the workplace. Melba Tolliver got fired from ABC for wearing her Afro while covering Trisha Nixon's wedding. White women began to perm their hair to imitate the fro. I guess if you can't beat them, join them. And so black women would try everything they could, straighten their hair and lighten their skin to look as much like white women. It's changed because black people are aware and White people are aware of it too because white people now want uh, natural wigs. They want wigs like this. Dig it? Isn't it beautiful? All right. <laughs> In the 1970s, we transitioned from the afro to the jerry curl. This allowed blacks to have a head full of glossy curls while softening the hair. Locks have been around for thousands of years, but Bob Marley introduced them to pop culture in the 1970s. Rastafarians in Jamaica grew their dreadlocks to pay homage to Samson. Samson was a judge in the Old Testament who had the spirit of God upon him. He possessed great strength, but this strength lied in his long, uncut hair. From this, Rastafarians believe that dreadlocks are a sign of strength and inner power. In Rastafarian culture, if a parent passes away, they will cut their dreads to start a new cycle of dread growth. This is done to show respect. In the 1980s, afros were shaped up and cut on the sides. This was known as the fade. This was a popular hairstyle amongst black men. Designs and cornrows were added to the fade, which expressed creativity. In 1990, Weave made its first appearance in Essence magazine, titled Sisters Love Weaves. Though weaves were a trend that began among celebrities as early as the 1980s. By 2015, weaves turned into a billion dollar industry. In 2018, more women have become natural, which is often referred to as the natural hair movement. As of today, relaxer sales have declined by 37% and sales for natural hair products have increased. We are now taking pride in our black hair. Some men have even been seen embracing their fro. We are appreciating our hair in its natural state and becoming aware of how beautiful it is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like, comment on, and share this video. Here's my Instagram for anyone that wants to give me a follow and it also will be listed down below in the description box. And I thank you guys again for watching. See you guys next time.